Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. Question, if an AI helps you make a song, do they get writing credit? A lot of people say that you shouldn't sleep on Janae Aiko's music, but your baby can. What if you could watch Into the Spider-Verse in concert? Thanks to Sony Pictures, now that's possible. All that and more, but first we start with SNL. With the writer's strike still going on, SNL wrapped their 48th season three episodes sooner than expected. As we wait for the agreements to be made, NPR Music took it upon themselves to rank all of this season's musical guests. The list has a total of 18 artists, with the likes of Coldplay, Steve Lacey, Lizzo, and more. The top three on their list is Meg Thee Stallion, Kendrick Lamar, and Sam Smith, with Meg being number one. Writer Stephen Thompson says Meg Thee Stallion's performance in 2020 had vivid and expressive staging, unmatched energy, and a smart mix of style. And she returned this season displaying a side she has never showcased before. I'm happy with Thompson's choices, just wish Lizzo was higher up on the list. If you have kids, this one's for you. Janae Aiko just released a new album to help new parents and their babies relax. The album is called Sleep Soul, Relaxing R&B Baby Sleep Music Volume 3. On their site, they describe this album as a fresh R&B inspired take on the traditional baby sleep music genre which combines R&B with white, pink, and brown soundscapes. Although I personally do not have a kid, I listened to this album several times for science. Paul McCartney just completed a decades old song with the help of AI. He used the new technology to extract late Beatles member John Lennon's voice from an old demo. The song is set to be released this year and currently does not have a name, but it is rumored to be a 1978 Lennon composition called Now and Then. The song was originally scrapped because according to McCartney, George Harrison had called it fucking rubbish and refused to work on it. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Live and Concert Tour. This tour will feature a band, electronics, and a scratch DJ and turntables playing music from the score and soundtrack of the film, including songs by Post Malone, Little Wayne, Jaden Smith, and Nicki Minaj. The tour is from August 26th to November 18th, with the first stop being Columbus, Georgia, and the last stop is Bellingham, Washington. For more information and to book tickets, go to the website spiderverseinconcert.com. Just think, What's Up Danger is going to hit differently with a live band backing it. While Into the Spider-Verse is getting a musical encore, the sequel's companion album is receiving mixed reviews. Ratingsgamemusic.com gives the album a B and says without curse words, we get everything from inspirational to lyrical to vulnerable bangers. On the other hand, one user on RateYourMusic.com says nothing here excites me. The first Spider-Verse soundtrack, while nowhere near as consistent as this, had some really high peaks like What's Up Danger, Sunflower, and Invincible. Here though, the best songs are just good and that's really it and everything else is decent. Another user says, this will garner attention off the names, but it's not worth your time. So I also find the Across the Spider-Verse album to be decent. The best songs, in my opinion, are Am I Dreaming, Link Up, and Self Love. But the best of them all that stays in my head every day is Silk and Cologne by Eight and Offset. It's a song that will get you wrapped up in its instrumentals and distract you from possibly being in the wrong universe. But I love how the commenters put it. That's all for this video. Like this video if this is something you would like to see more of. Thank you for watching and if you made it to the end, comment a spider emoji. As usual, stay curious my friends.